written in the past be reproduced. And in the signs of the times, let not the articles be long or the print fine. Do not try to crowd everything into one number of the paper. Let the print be good and let earnest living experiences be put into the paper. Why is she saying this? Because we're told in the scripture, we're told that there will be a falling away. We're told and warned that all manner of winds of doctrine will come into our church. And the only way that we're going to stand firm is if we understand the foundational pillars of our message in church. When we reprint the works of the pioneers, we have a foundation, we know what the truth is, and that will guard us and protect us from all winds of doctrine. Let the truths that are the foundation of our faith be kept before the people. Some will depart from the faith, like Dudley can write, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They talk science, and the enemy comes in and gives them an abundance of science. But it is not the science of salvation. It is not the science of humility, of consecration, or of the sanctification of the spirit. We are now to understand what the pillars of our faith are. The truth that we have made us a people, what we are, leading us on step by step. Pioneer history to be kept before the people. The record of the experiences through which the people of God passed in the early history of our work must be republished. Many of those who have since come into the truth are ignorant of the way in which the Lord wrought. The experience of William Miller and his associates, of Captain Joseph Bates and of other pioneers in the Advent message, should be kept before our people. Elder Loughborough's book should receive attention. Our leading men should see what can be done for the circulation of this book. This book was called The Rise and Progress of the Seventh-day Adventists. And John Loughborough was one of the last pioneers. And so Sister White was, was shown in vision that John Loughborough should be released to focus on repeating the history of the church. Because he witnessed many of the things that transpired. He witnessed and he interviewed other witnesses, example when the, when Ellen White held the Bible up for, for, for a good while, he witnessed it, he witnessed people um, see that, he interviewed them, he interviewed a doctor who, who investigated Ellen White while in vision and she wasn't breathing. So this is why this book was quite important because he had first hand witnesses of what took place. The sanctuary a point of special attack. In the future deception of every kind is to arise and we want solid ground for our feet. We want solid pillars for the building. Not one pin is to be removed from that which the Lord has established. The enemy will bring in false theories such as the doctrine that there is no sanctuary. This is one of the points on which there will be a departing from the faith. Where shall we find safety unless it be in the truths that the Lord has been given for the last 50 years? And there are some today that do not believe in the sanctuary doctrine. We had Desmond Ford, he made a major attack on this doctrine. And there are others as well. Here we see a chart. On this chart we see what the early church believed. They kept the faith of Jesus, the commandments of God, they kept the Sabbath, they believed in salvation by grace, they believed in baptism by immersion, they believed in the second coming, and they believed in the priesthood of believers rather than the hierarchy of priesthood. But what does the remnant church believe? They believe exactly the same. The faith of Jesus, the commandments of God, they keep the Sabbath, salvation by grace, believers baptism, the second coming, and the priesthood of believers. And we see that after the crucifixion of Christ, we see that there was a falling away. And we see that we have the Sunday laws coming in, we have Christmas, Easter, uh, we have Mary worship, we have infant baptism, we have burning incense, and we have this whole apostasy coming in. But we see this time period here in AD 538 is when the papacy came into true power. And from 538 to 1798, we're told for 1260 years that this power will reign supremely. But after 1798, there would be a deadly wound. In 1844, 
something happened. We had the Millerite movement and they proclaimed a message and after 1844 God raised up the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We see this chart a little bit clearer. Tradition, purgatory, mass, baby baptism, rosary, immortality of the soul, Sunday worship, all this apostasy came in. But God brought about the Reformation. We had the Greek Orthodox, the Episcopalians, the Lutherans, we had the Presbyterians, the Methodists, the Baptists, the Millerites, and the Seventh-day Adventists. And during this time here, during the 1260, the church was in the wilderness. We had the world engines, we had Christians in Ethiopia and Africa, in Japan and China. These Christians kept the Sabbath, but their apostolic Christianity was in obscurity. And after 1798, the church came out of the wilderness and God raised up the Seventh-day Adventist church. As you can see during this Reformation, that step by step God was revealing truths that were hidden. We see Martin Luther, he brought about salvation by faith and justification by faith. And then we see the Presbyterians bringing in a, a practical, workable Christianity. And then we had the Methodists. The Methodists were, were emphasizing sanctification by faith. And then the Millerites were presenting emphasis on the second coming. But what have the Seventh-day Adventists got to offer? They brought in the Sanctuary Doctrine. But what was the relevance of the Sanctuary Doctrine? When we take the Sanctuary model, we have the, the, the courtyard, the holy place, and the most holy place. But we find that when we, when we look at the Sanctuary model, the courtyard represented here, Martin Luther, justification by faith. And then we find in the holy place, we find the Methodists, the emphasis of sanctification. But what do we find in the most holy place? We find the complete eradication of sin and the cleansing of the sanctuary. God is looking for people to have complete victory over their sins. A group of people who will show that it is possible to have justification, sanctification and complete cleansing. Now if we take this model do you think we should go forward in our experience or do you think we should go backward in our experience? We should go forward. And you know, a number of occasions uh, <clears throat> we get a little bit confused. I've been to presentations where there's a very strong emphasis here on Martin Luther and absolutely doing away with the Methodists. Yet we need to go forward in our experience, not backwards. And, and someone like Desmond Ford, he was saying, this is where the truth is, justification by faith only. And so we get all wrapped up in theological discussion and theological disputes when there really shouldn't be any. It's simple. God raised up Martin Luther to bring the truth of justification by faith. God raised the, the Wesley brothers to bring sanctification. Sanctification is not to be separated from justification. Sanctification is like a continual daily justification. And then God raised up the, the Adventists to bring in the sanctuary doctrine to say an end of sin must come. The gospel was lost, but God is looking for people to restore the everlasting gospel. The year is September the 11th, 1814, and there's a great war taking place. Does anyone know what the war is? Who is it between? <coughs> it's between the United Kingdom and the United States of America. War of the War of Independence. The infant United States of America is in the midst of a war with Great Britain. On the shores of Lake Champlain a crucial battle begins. It grows and it rages and it gets worse. Before nightfall the battle is over and the British fleet withdraws. You see, everything was stacked against America. America should have lost the war and Great Britain should have won the war. But something happened. No one can really put their finger on it, 
that the British retreat 